Hello, my beautiful humans. Thank you for joining me on another episode here on Creative Street. Today's episode is about creative personalities. Um, personally, I don't think that there is a specific trait to creatives. However, and I think I think everybody can be a creative. Um, however, I do think that there are things that creatives share um, in common that it resonates uh, with a lot of us. So like, for instance, um, great masterpiece, right? They, they tend to have a quality about them that individuals can resonate with, can, can really in tune with. Um, some being like, they have like a touch of somberness. Uh, this is just me personally talking. The greatest pieces I've ever seen, they tend to have this, this edge of somber, this edge of sadness, this age of tragedy. I think creatives live in this weird dichotomy of tragedy and happiness. We find happiness and joy and get lost in our world when we're creating things. But at the same time, we feel we feel the need to create due to some internal struggle that we feel. I don't think creativity just comes from your relationship to the natural world, but I think it comes from the relationship to yourself and to the other, like the the mystic, the bigger thing. And it, it sounds very daunting and it it doesn't sound it doesn't sound like true in terms of, you know, all the other amazing creatives that are out there that are probably not just some tragic heroes. Um, but they, I'm telling you, when you look into like really amazing works of arts that have transcended to time, there's a relationship to tragedy there. There's a relationship to something bigger than what we are and i think the reason being that those outlive um their era is because as humans we can all resonate with sadness we can all resonate with that somberness there's just to kind of put in a general sense of what i'm talking about is like we can't all experience what happiness is like in relationship to one another, right? Like what I experience as happy or like what I, what brings me joy is not what brings you joy. But if something sad were to happen to me, you can find a way to empathize and connect with that. At least most people can. So I think that's what per, like part of a, a creative personality really is about it's like finding that thing that connects humans across time and i think that sadness failure um and that relationship with the cosmic world is something that definitely we can all relate to um regardless of the time period however just on a little lighter note um there is this book that i that i, I skimmed i haven't finished reading um, it's called the characteristics of a creative personality. Um, and one of like, I'm going to read a few things that the author mentions, um, which it's uh, technically the book is called creativity flow in the psychology of discovery and invention by Mihaly. I'm not going to try to pronounce that last name. It is a, I think it's a Russian last name and I just, I don't want to butcher it. <laughs> um, but it's really interesting. Uh, so they say um, creative individuals have a great deal of energy, but they're also often quiet and at rest. So although in our minds we're chaotic and we're like, you know, I want to do this and I want to do that. And like you can find these creative flows in the physical world in the world where other people experience you, you tend to be closed off. You tend to be quiet and more observant and just 
at peace. Obviously, there's artists that are not like that. <laughs> um, but I can definitely resonate with that, which is kind of why it stuck out to me. Um, because if you, I don't know about you, but when I get into um, a new environment, I tend to kind of sit back and observe and be a little bit more sh closed off. Uh, I don't want to say it's social anxiety because that's not it. It's just I'm a little more reserved until I get comfortable and then you can see my weird personality come out. <laughs> I'll leave it at weird. Um, but creative individuals, she or they also say that creative individuals tend to be smart, um, yet naive at the same time. And I and I I that also popped out to me because yes, you there's some genius to the ability to in the ability to take what's in here and put it out into the world for others to see um yet i think the naivety comes from either like what you have in your head doesn't always translate like the way that you want it out into the world and that and that's happened um personally to me as well where like I have this really amazing idea like in my mind of a piece of work that I want to do but then when I actually attempt to do it I either am lacking some skill or it's just not realistic because physics or whatever other things just don't let it be um, or don't work out the way that it wants, that I think it would. <laughs> um, so there is some naivety. And I think also it comes from this, like I have, I have a, th a thought that a creative, right? Like a person that's out there attempting to translate whatever they see in their mind's eye out into the world it's your baby. You're being vulnerable. You're, you're expecting for people to understand and kind of read your mind as to what you were trying to do with this. Um, but people don't read each other's minds. Like I, you won't know what I'm thinking when I'm, when I'm drawing something, unless I'm, I'm telling you what it is that, yeah, that I'm doing or how it came about or something. So somebody that might come and see, a piece that I had one intention for. Um, and I thought it was, it clearly gave that message. It got lost in translation or it got lost in perception um, from the receiver. And it's not, it's not a bad thing. Um, but there is a sort of like naiveness that comes with that, um, with that mindset that, everybody's going to perceive what you create the same way that you intended it to. They also say that creative individuals have a combination of playfulness and discipline or responsibility and irresponsibility. And that is something that like most creatives talk about where um, in a few episodes back, um, I spoke with Salvito, um, with Sway. Molina, who he was talking something about this, where at the end of the day, an artist, you have to be disciplined as an artist, you have to do it consistently. Even when you don't feel like creating something, that's where you become stagnant, because then you get stuck in that mindset. And then you feel like you only have to create during this certain period of time in your life, when really creating is a discipline. Creating means doing it even when you're not in that mood, even when you're not feeling it. You broke out time to do this. Um, and yet there's that playfulness to it. So as in the act you're doing it, let yourself be free. Let yourself do what it is that you want to do that you see would work best or maybe not see. Maybe you're just playing around with the materials and allowing things to come to fruition. Um, but it's a discipline. You have to, you have to stick to carving out that time so that you work on something so that you can get better at it. So you research, so you understand the fundamentals. Um, 
I can't remember where I read this or who said this, but I think like there's in order to break the rules, you have to understand the rules. And that's where the discipline and creativity happens. So, or like it comes into play. You have to understand how to how to draw a face in order for you to draw expressions so that you can make up expressions so you can um, do all these cool, unique things with them so that you know how to break it and how far you can take it while it's still being within the same realm. Because I hope that makes sense. Um, but yeah, definitely there is a responsibility to your art form, um, whatever that art form looks like, while at the same time, this ability to just break those rules, break those boundaries. And I think that's where creativity really lies. It's in that, that fine line of understanding what it is that you're, that you're doing and that you're communicating while at the same time, allowing yourself to be free enough to express that as accurately as you possibly can. Um, <laughs> they also mentioned that creative individuals alternate between imagination and fantasy. Um, imagination, fantasy on one end, while at the same time kind of rooted to reality. And I think that ties back into um, to that smartness and that naiveness at the same time, where depending on what it is that you're trying to communicate, right? So like somebody writing a movie screenplay or um creating like art or, or cartoon or something and you really want it to resonate with people you really want it to not just be taken lightly there's a there's a need to have that grounded in some sense where us humans living in this world that's going to be receiving your art that's going to be perceiving your 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 creation we need to find some resonation there we need to find something to connect with and the biggest thing that we can connect with is in those little minute realities um hence why i was talking about earlier where i think the pieces that transcend times are the ones that talk that like show some sort of abstract emotion they're leaning towards like this sadness or the failure some cosmic relationship of our mortality um just because we cannot understand that concept we can all connect with that concept we can connect with that reality while at the same time an artist is like i think their job is to find ways to break away from those realities while still tying it back where like you you hook me. D does that make sense? I hope it did. <laughs> I know you guys can't answer me. <laughs> but that's a bad habit. I, I always do the ums and the and the rights and the does that make sense? I'm trying to walk away from it. Sorry um if that is a pet peeve for anybody. <laughs> um there's also so I was thinking about this earlier. There's there's this weird dichotomy that we live in in the creative world. And I think it has to do with um, that inter that like that introversion that we experience and the extroversion, right? It's like we we walk on the weird line of, I have to people, I have to, I have to socialize, I have to be a human in this physical world. But I do believe that creatives have this, um, this ability to kind of have an out-of-body experience. Um, I know I've felt this, I don't know, and I'm, I'm sure other creatives have in other books that I've read and the artists that I've, I've spoken to and, and talked to, um, they describe something similar where it's like you kind of are able to step away from your reality 
you can step away from being a physical being and just kind of get in touch with something universal, something, uh, I don't want to say bigger than yourself because then I feel like it sounds very religious, but it's not. I'm just, I'm talking about like the cosmic, right? Like the ether. There's something that is very, and I think that's more of the introversion side because it's not something that people can see. It's something that only you can feel and only you can resonate with inside your mind. Um, <clears throat> so it's a weird it's a weird relationship that we have with being human how we can we can easily be in our physical state and like consciously um communicating with other humans and consciously doing acts in this world that manifest into something physical um but we live in the mind uh, if that makes sense, like whether you think you're creative or not, you live in your mind. We have monologues, endless count, continuous monologue. Um, some individuals call this noise, uh, depending on what that monologue is really telling you, but it's a monologue. And I, some people aren't even realizing that that's what it is. Um, I work in the mental health world and there was, there was an individual who had lost their parents, had lost this. And, um, they told one of the physicians that they were hearing voices. However, this individual like comes from an era. And I, I think it also has to do with your lack of understanding of, of that self um, or lack of exploration of the self and understanding that internal monologue that you have. And so this individual was telling the physician that um, they were hearing voices in their head and, you know, through therapy um, and through other mental health tactics. Um, and when I spoke to the physician, she like the physician told me, like, some people are just, they're not aware of that internal monologue. They're not, they're not actively paying attention to what your inner thoughts are saying. And, and that is so true for just, I'll, I'll keep it back to the creative stuff. So in the, in the creative mind, your inner self might be telling you, I want to do this and I want to pour paint here and I want to create a line here and stuff like that. And I think in that transcendent moment, that introversion moment where you allow that internal monologue, instead of saying, I want to draw a line here and I want to pour paint here, they just do. And like you, your first level self, which this is kind of what I, what I imagine it as like, this is my first level self where I'm talking to you all and I'm physically within my body but when I start painting, when I step away, this physical self is just a machine for my internal self to do. My internal self kind of dictates, oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. And instead of telling my first self, do this, it just does it. You get me? Like my body just goes onto that autopilot of I'm allowing whatever comes to my mind to just do. Um, I forgot why, how I got here, but yeah, the, oh, the internal monologue, the internal monologue is so important and it's very like, it's instrumental to just being able to exist and, and live and especially in the creative world, you, there's a conversation always happening. And although it sounds like a monologue, I've, like a continuous monologue um, inside your mind. It's a conversation. It's a conversation with yourself, the physical self that is out here in this world and your internal self with the values and the wants and the desires and all the other things that are abstract that are not physically manifested in this world. 
unless our physical self manifests it. Does that make sense? It's, it's an, it's a constant conversation. Um, and it's a conversation with the self. It's not a conversation with other people. Um, sorry, <laughs> going back to the original conversation, um, in the same book, uh, Mahaley, that's another attempt at that name. Um, they say that creative individuals are remarkable and proud, like they're, they're remarkably humble and proud at the same time, which anybody that boasts and is an ego, like is an egoist about their work, not to say that like, you can't be proud of your work on the contrary, like you're hot shit. If you made something that not just impressed and then communicated, um, what you had in your mind to the individuals and you did that like in a unique way that bro it's not everybody can do that that's amazing boast yourself you deserve that right um but there's a humbleness to a way of doing that i can say i'm hot shit because i made this thing that nobody else in this world thought of or created or you know i thought of this problem the same problem that other people have been trying to accomplish or like trying to solve and i did it in a new, unique way um but then there's a way of being able to be like but i was only able to do that because of all my failures all the experiences all the these other things that accumulated this conversation with this individual that sparked the idea this um you know my mentor that taught me this or just experiencing from other creatives how they approach things and then that kind of triggered something there is a sense of humbleness there because we don't we don't live in a vacuum we don't live in a vacuum with ourselves guys um we live in a world that is surround we we live in a world where other people are having that same internal conversation with themselves or that internal monologue and then kind of experiencing the world and perceiving the world in different ways and you are too so we we don't we're constantly being bombarded and being influenced by others and by things and the world around us not just ourselves and our own thoughts so although you're hot shit because yes you solved this or you did this and you know you made this yes you're hot shit but at the same time like you it didn't come to you out of nowhere it it manifested into it into itself <sighs> sorry i'm a bit uh all right give me a second it manifested into itself because of all the other things around you because of the individual that you are because of your experiences growing from the day that you were born all the way up until where you are now it's important um so there is a sense of pride and there is a sense of humbleness that creatives experience or should be experiencing and if you're not Please self-reflect. <laughs> Please self-reflect. Reflect, oh Lord. Uh, anyways. Um, and one of the last ones that kind of like stood out to me was most creative people are very passionate about their work, yet they can be extremely objective as well. And I think, I think, uh, the author phrased it really pretty where they said objective um, but when I hear that phrase like I think to myself like the common phrase of like we are our, we are our own worst critics you can make something and it be one of the greatest pieces you've ever made and because you were part of the process and you saw it come to fruition and you saw it develop right before your eyes and like you were the one that made it, you know where all those flaws are. 
like I can show you three pieces right now where <laughs> when I was making it I was like oh, crap I messed up here and I messed up here and I and I did this and I should have done this and da 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 yet when somebody else looks at it they don't see that they see that as just part of the work which is great um and it's it's very touching when somebody can look at your art piece and and love it for what it is even though you know it has 101 mistakes and flaws to it and something didn't come out exactly the way that you had planned or you had envisioned envisioned it um so although you're very passionate and in the, in that passion we can get lost in all the little details and we can get really self-conscious and we can get really sensitive about our stuff um, because it's a vulnerable position when you're creative and you're, you're showing somebody or somebody's something that came out of your mind. It's very vulnerable. It's, it's a very um, like heart pounding moment because you want them to see or you want them to experience <clears throat> what you're trying to communicate and you're and you want them to to love it as much as you do or like to see your love for your for your work that passion that you put into your piece um and some people can see it and some people can't and it's it's a very um it's a very sensitive moment I, you know i can 100 percent resonate and in the sense of being extremely objective you can tell you can tell when you i don't know to me i can tell you when i made a piece and i'm just like eh i don't love it it's not my best you know, like I know I have something better in me, something more refined. And again, talking about all the failures and the mess ups that went into making the piece, like when you're so aware of it, it's hard not to be objective. But, um, and I, I think there's a beauty in, in that there's a there's a beauty in being able to see when there's room for improvement there is a sense of humbleness and a sense of of pride in your own work when you can see it for what it is and see i can get better at this or you know this is my first attempt at this maybe there's a different way i can approach it next time because this wasn't my my favorite um, and I've had those too, like practice pieces. I call them practice pieces because it's the first time I'm trying something out. And then it turns out it's really, really cool. Like my alcohol ink um, piece. That one was a practice piece or is a practice piece um, in my eyes. But <laughs> the final product came out so cool that I was like, I was like, wow, if anybody knew if this is a practice piece, you, you'd call me a liar. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah. So that's my episode today on creative personality. There's so much more to say because I think that creatives come with so many different qualities and um, skill sets and, and abilities. There's also this, nobody really mentioned this, at least that, that I read, um, but there is this, this want to, um, to try new things, um, to, uh, to be kind of rebellious and to just be okay with that failure. I think that in our physical world in our in our everyday lives it's hard to accept failure it's it's like nobody wants to fail a class nobody wants to fail at work nobody wants to fail in front of their family 
But I think for creatives, failure is a superpower um, when you're making your stuff, when you're you're creating your your artwork. It's it's a superpower because in failing, from my experience, aside from you learn what not to do, you can also get inspired. Um, you can like like I've had those aha moments like oh snap so this is what happens when I do this okay it didn't work out on this one but I'm gonna try it out on the next piece and see how I can control it and see how this can can be a thing um like uh the piece that I'm making right now um that's just it's high flow acrylic with water and based on how much water you put on it is how light or how dark it can get and how much manipulation you can actually do and the technique that I'm using right now like that's not something that I picked up on like YouTube or um I'm using TikTok now which is weird <laughs> um but it's not something I picked up from anybody. It's something that I tried or rather I spilled water on my first, um, art, like acrylic piece that I was using high flow on. I spilled water on it and I saw what happens like with that, you know, when I go like this to the brush and I can like detail out the line while still leaving some of the paint on there. Like that was something that was totally by accident. And it's become one of my favorite ways of making a piece. Um, it's so cool <laughs> to just kind of like manipulate the paint that way, um, especially with acrylic, because acrylic can be so umph, like it's hard to maneuver it once it's on the page. Um, so it was it was really cool to experiment and and see how that happened and how that came into fruition and then it brought along a bunch of other pieces that were inspired um using that same tactic um so it it's a cool failure is a superpower guys <laughs> it's a really cool way to just experiment and learn new things and especially when it comes to your creative stuff because if you're not doing it for the love of doing it, then why are you doing it? No one's going to connect with something that you genuinely don't care about. I At least I don't believe that. Um, I know that there's stuff that we can connect to or that we, we could, on a surface level, like buy and stuff like that and just be like, oh, yeah, this is so cute. But to really resonate with someone if you don't have your your heart into it um and you're not doing it for the love of doing it i don't think people are going to genuinely connect with it even through on it throughout the ages and although i don't think that's the purpose of every piece i do believe that there is that subtle need or I think a creative should have that want for their their stuff to kind of transcend that time and influence generations to come. Um, especially if you have <clears throat> something something of importance to communicate. It's important to find a way for your art piece, um, your music, your your movie, your TV show whatever it is that your that your creative outlet is to transcend that time so that it can influence the generation after you and it can communicate what your ideals and your values are for the generations to come. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. I'm a little... <laughs> I'm still coming back from being sick. So sorry about that. Um... That's all I got for today. If you want me to continue um, the creative personality conversation, uh, just let me know. I can do a creative personality part two. There are other topics that I kind of didn't go into as much. Um, I kind of just focused on um, just the actual like qualities of a per of a creative, 
like in terms of personality traits. Um, and that it was just very broad in general. But if you want, um, we can go into a deep dive <laughs> into some of those, um, into some of those traits. Um, yeah. So I'll leave you with a quote from the creative act by rick rubin he says to live as an artist is a way of being in the world a way of perceiving a practice of paying attention refinishing uh, refining our sensitivity to tune into the more subtle notes looking for what draws us in and what pushes us away noticing what feeling tones arise and where they lead To create is to live. He doesn't say that, but I say that. To create is to live. And to live is to create. And that's all I got. That's all I got for you today. I hope you have a wonderful Wednesday. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope you find a moment in today to be creative to step out of your body and experience that inner monologue let loose. Um, I hope you have a beautiful day. Thank you for joining me. Oh, like I mentioned earlier, I'm on TikTok now um, at Escoto Art Studio. So follow me on there. I do post random reels the last reel i post was uh <laughs> so i did a, a ding dong ditch with my um i'm like at my sister's house we we're going out and like you can see me running up to like at her house knocking on the door and then running away downstairs like in heels um i thought that was really funny and you know <laughs> it's uh it was a fun way to spend a friday night um but yeah so follow me on there follow me on instagram i'm at st escoto um you can see it on the thingy um i'm also at escoto art studio um at escoto art studio my website is escoto art um i do do more art pieces on there uh, the Escoda Art Studio One account is more for geared towards my art pieces. Um, and the website has not just the podcast, but also uh, my like online store and my arts, like my gallery and stuff. Um, so if you're interested, just check them out. Um, and I'll be posting the one once the one that um, you see me taping um, or as part of the episode. Once that's completed, it'll also go up on the website um, for sale. So if you are interested in that, and I'll announce it also. Um, but yeah, I hope you have an awesome day. Uh, I appreciate you all for tuning in. Have a great week. Stay creative.